saved by grace. So we'll be right there. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Can we stand to our feet and just praise God? For just praise God. Thank him for all things that he has already done. Bless your name. Because we didn't have to be here today. We have people in the hospital. There's some people that didn't wake up today. We just need to give him honor. We need to give him praise. Just tell him thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all the things that he's doing for us today. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name. Bless your name. My soul. My soul says yes. But when you can get your flesh to say yes, I'm talking about the true worshipers of a God. You need to get your flesh to say yes. Get that flesh under submission to your soul. Just praise God. You might be warm. You might have a lot of things going on, but right now we're just going to raise up the name of Jesus. We're going to raise up God. Hallelujah. Just praise him. Praise him for yourself. You don't praise him for me. Not because I asked you to. How has he been to you? Has he been a good God to you? Has he been faithful to you? This is your time. This is your time to call that flesh under submission. And tell that flesh is not going to act up. You're not going to bother me. Because today you are under submission of my soul. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But that thing that's greater in you is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And you got the Holy Ghost down in you. Then you command your flesh. You command your flesh. You don't allow that flesh to do what it want to do. Right now we're just going to praise God. He's a good God. He's a good God. I didn't have to be here. I could have been dead in my grave. My God. My God, I could have been dead in my grave. My God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I just worship you and magnify you. Glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. You may be seated if you like. Ooh, if you'd like to go with me to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. If you need a title for today, it's Saved by Grace. Thank you, Lord. Let me put on my eyes and stop acting like I can see. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to read this real quick. Ephesians chapter 2. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespass and sin, wherein in the time ye walked according to the courses of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in children of disobedience, among whom also we have conversation in past times in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. We were by nature children of wrath, even as others. But God, hallelujah, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace. By grace, we are saved. Look at somebody and just tell them, by his grace. By his grace. If you knew me before, you might not have. That's right. But I'm talking about the grace right. of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When we look at this, we see this story is being told by Apostle Paul. I call him Saul Paul. Saul Paul. Why you call him Saul Paul, preacher? Because he used to look like something else. I used to look like something else besides Dr. Turner. Dr. Todman. I used to look like something else. Apostle Paul used to look like something else. Right. They called him Saul. He was a murderer. That's right. He had so much hate in him. It was unbelievable. I've been searching the scriptures trying to get down. What is this man? What was his problem? Why did he hate Jews so much? He was a tax collector. And see, in Rome, you collect X amount of dollars. So if they tell you bring Five dollars per person. If you could bring 20, the other 15 was for you. So Paul was one of those brutal kind of tax collectors. He going to squeeze every dime up out of you. Then he going to find you and walk you off someplace and kill you. Because that's the way Saul was. He didn't care if it was a man. He didn't care if it was children or a woman. Didn't matter to him if you were Jew. 
He hated you. He hated the disciples. My God. Why was this man have so much hate in him? Because you know what? It's not about the man. It's about the spirit in the man. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. We look at people some time ago. Why are they so mean? Why did this happen? Why did they happen? Why did they do that to me? I'm so nice. Don't they know I'm holy? I'm the pastor. Why are they talking to me like that? Why? Because it's the spirit in the man. It's the spirit in the man. And that's what we need to attack today. My God, the grace of God. It's difficult to tell somebody about being some way or going something or doing something unless you've been there. That's why God used a man like Paul. Paul was a murderer. He went from house to house, killing people, dragging them out, pulling them out of their homes. And God said, mm, look at this man. I know I can use him. <laughs> He's strong. I know I can use him. Gotta use what he wants to use, understand? I know I can use him. So if you out there today and you running around doing different things, I don't know if you bad as Saul Paul was, but God can still use you. God can still use you. When we look at verse 1, Christ caught Paul on the road to Damascus. And people talk about that road. You hear about that road to Damascus. Well, what he had done is gone to the high priest and gotten permission and letters so he can go to Damascus, to the synagogue, to the church house and pull folks out and kill them. And God said, you know something? He gets to the point where enough is enough. That's right. That's right. Enough is enough. Either you're going to serve me or I'm just going to bring you on home. But he felt that Paul was worthy. He was worth using. I hear people say, I'm tired of people using me. Well, some people not even worth using. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Praise God. Paul saw was worth using. A murderer was worth using. A liar was worth using. God stopped by and saved him anyway. He was saved by grace. My God. Uh, by grace, he was saved. You want to agree with me on that? Amen. Because surely it was nothing he was doing. Right. He wasn't even praying. He was killing God's folks. My God. And when we look in verse 2 and 3, we put our noses up at people sometimes and we go around and we make judgments of what other people are doing. But the word said, you used to be the same way in the past. How Maybe you was just holy, sanctified, filled yeah. with the Holy Ghost, heaven and speaking in tongues all your life. You was born like that, and you always been like that. You love everybody. Yeah. Then your name must be Jesus. My God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to watch how we treat each other. We got to, because she, she, that's my daughter. But she don't belong to me. She belong to Christ. That's right. I tried to do the best I could right. that belonged to him. But what belonged to him? And the only one can judge me for that is him. Praise God. When you look at verse 4 and 5, Paul is saying his mercy and his love. I was saved by grace. My God. God says in his word, my people perish for lack of knowledge. When you don't know whose you are, you don't know who you are. You just stumble running around here. You don't know. You don't know. I was watching this... Um, show, I'm not going to call names, but this um, celebrity is very affluent, and they, they create situations where people have to bow down to them as though they're gods, because they want a career, Jeez. and they will do anything. They'll say anything, they'll go anywhere. I said, oh God, I know they never could have chosen me for that show. I would have told them all so fast. My they would have me, exit. <laughs> Thank you, we don't need you. <laughs> But people do anything. He made them walk across the Brooklyn Bridge for a piece of cheesecake. Are you serious? Jesus. Are you serious? How far would you walk for Jesus? How far would you walk? How long would you sit in the church house for Jesus? The one who gave you breath. The one who gave you life. The one who put a roof over your head. The one who put food in your belly. Clothes on your back. Hallelujah. How long would you do that 
for Jesus. But you'll walk across the bridge for a man because he said he's going to do this, he's going to do that. And you get back and go, you eliminated, you eliminated, you eliminated. That's the devil. <laughs> that is the devil. That's nothing but Satan. You got to know my people perish for lack of knowledge. In Proverbs 12 and uh, chapter 12, verse 1, the word says, Whosoever loveth instructions, love knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. It's just stupid. That's what it said in the Bible. You hate correction, you're just stupid. <laughs> Let's just call it like it is. You know, because people want you to use nice, fancy words. Don't hurt my feelings. Amen. You know, it's holy to who y'all. But that's not what God gave me. Amen. And by the time you come before me, it's, time, it's cutting time. But that goes, you know, both ways. It goes both ways. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because it's not what you believe that's true. It's what you obey. That's right. It's what you obey. Yeah. Because even the devil believed that Jesus was Jesus. That's right. That's right. That's right. He even quoted the 91st Psalm back to Jesus. How bad is that? And you think he's not going to come after you? That's right. Because I'm so holy. And I know the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please. We need to get real with this thing. We are saved by grace, not by anything that we have had or anything that we could have done. It's the grace of God. He wants us. God can go where he wants to. He can stay as long as he wants to. And he leaves when he's ready to go. That's right. The people say, oh, my God, the kids are so bad now in school because they took God out of school. Think about it. Who's saying that? The saints of God. The church folks are saying that. What makes you think the Supreme Court got the power to move God? Amen. Got the power to move Jehovah. Got the power to move Almighty God. Got the power to move Elohim. El Shaddai. Jehovah Jireh. The Lord that provides. Jehovah Rapha. A healing God. Jehovah Shalom. The Prince of Peace. The Supreme Court got that kind of power? Are you serious? That's your name. Wow. What makes you think they have that kind of power? Jesus. God is saying, you know what? There's a season for everything. There was a season when I went to school for a man to stand before the assembly and to pray and to do whatever had to be done. There was a season. But now, you're walking around pastor, bishop, deacon, prophetess, whoever you want to call yourself, and you can't pray over your own children? Right. You can't pray over the schoolhouse. Right. You can't pray over things that are wrong. This country, it doesn't matter who the president is. What matters is who is the king of kings. Yes. Who is the Lord of lords. Who is the great I am. Right. Yeah. My God. Yeah. My God. He is an awesome one time God. Yeah. Everything has its season. It's time for you to intercede for yours. It's time for you to intercede for your children. I was a teacher, and going back to this in the classroom, I went over to a school I used to substitute in Los Angeles. And a lady, I was leaving, I don't know, I went over to sub in a special ed class, and I was like, ooh, this is a lot of work here. Yeah. But you know what happened? There was too many kids in there. So it's supposed to be 10, and they had something like 20 kids in there, which is really against the law. Yep. So it took a lot of work, and people were quitting the class, and they um, asked me to come back, and I was laying in the bed going, Jesus, come on now, Lord. <laughs> Do you really want me to go back there? Oh, God, you got to give me strength. You got to help me. This is a hard job. So what happened was um, I decided, okay, I'm not going today. And I kept putting it off, putting it off. And then one day, I just woke up and said, I better go over there today. And some just strange hour, like 12, 23, mm -hmm. I show up. And the psychologist is there, and we're talking. And she said, well, they, they fill that position. I said, well, why am I here, God? So she said, what did you say? I said, I'm talking to the Lord. What did he send me over here for? I was all right at home. <laughs> and we were walking out. We got to the gate, and there was a lady there crying. And they asked her what was wrong, and she said her son was in the hospital, seven years old. His brain was swollen outside of his head. Oh my God. And they couldn't 
operate because of the swelling. So she was in such distress. And I'm standing there on the school ground, you know, wanting to go in. I'm like, mm -hmm, chomping at the bit. And I'm like, okay, Lord, okay, Lord, okay, Lord. So while they're talking to her, I'm, I'm praying silently. And then the Spirit said, speak to her and ask if she wants prayer. Always ask people because that means they're accepted. They're open to Jesus being there. If you don't want Jesus there, he says, shake the dust right. off your feet and keep it pushing. So I asked her, she said, yes, please pray for me. So I start praying for her, and I'm praying. And all of a sudden, I hear, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's half of the office have come out of the office. Jesus. They on my back like this, going, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I'm like, oh, oh I feel my health now. I go straight on in. Finding, rebuking, and casting, and calling things that are not as though they were. And I really prayed for this lady, and then um, I told the Lord, I made a vow, a covenant vow for this little boy. His name is Jamal. I'll never forget him. That I would fast and pray until he comes home. Amen. So after about a week, I called. They said, no, um, he's still in the hospital, but he's doing better. I'm like, okay. After about 10 days of fasting, I was like, Hello? <laughs> Y'all heard from Jamal yet? How you think he's doing? <laughs> they go, oh, Miss Turner, let me tell you. Jamal went home yesterday, and uh, they, his brain went down. They did the surgery. They thought he would have to go into rehab. He didn't have to go into rehab. He went straight home. His mother's so happy. She said, thank you. So don't tell me that you took God out of school. God wants to go. Yeah. When he wants to go. How he wants to go. He'll use anybody. That's right. And not only me, there's plenty of saints out there warring. Mm -hmm. Out there on the on the front line. Mm -hmm. So don't say stop saying that because you're giving that too much power. Yeah. Then there was another woman that God caught dead in her trespass. And that was the woman at the well. And we talk about the woman at the well, that was Jacob's well that he had made for his son Joseph. Yes. yes, hallelujah. And see, this was a Samaritan woman. But Jesus went all, he was on his way back to Galilee. He went all out of his way to go through Samaria for one woman. For one woman. Today we call her all kind of names. She had five husbands. What do y'all call that? We're not going to go into it. But Jesus did not disrespect her. He did right. not insult her. Right. He loved her. He loved her into the kingdom. Yeah. She looked at him and she, as he began to speak, and he said, she says, I perceive you're a Jew. And he continued to talk. She perceived he was a rabbi, a holy man. He was a prophet. Because he started calling her stuff out. Oh, and she said, how he asked her for a drink. And she said, a drink from me? Don't you know I'm a Samaritan woman? Jesus. How can you get a drink? You don't have a cup. He said, but you got one. And if you knew who was asking you for a drink, you'd ask me for a drink, right. and I'd give you a drink that you would never thirst for again in life. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. This woman, Jesus broke tradition. He, he broke at least three traditions that I can see. Because Jewish men did not speak to women in public, not even their wives. They had the Pharisees, they used to call them bloody and bruised. Because when they saw a woman, they just closed their eyes and bam, they the wall, anything. So you see a Pharisee stand up, they're all bruised up, you know, he saw some women. <laughs> but that's what they thought of women. So Jewish men didn't even acknowledge women in public. And number two, he asked for a drink from a contaminated woman. She was living with a man that wasn't her husband, Doc. But what did he do? He didn't treat her the way others were treating her. And then the other thing, she was a Samaritan. The Samaritans were a mixed breed. Uh, like over 700 years ago before Jesus even came, there was a war that captors divided up the Jewish people that were there. They took all the leaders and moved them out. 
the doctors, the lawyers, all the intelligence. They took it off the top and moved them out to different parts of the country, and they had the other people that were there, and those people, they mixed with different tribes. So the Jewish people looked at them like they were not part of the Jewish nation. And if you were not a Jew, they called you a dog. So they were dogs to them. But she wasn't a dog to Jesus. And Jesus will call you a dog and still love you. Jesus. Hallelujah. If I'm getting called by a dog, then let it be by Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He saved her. It was his grace that saved her. Grace is a gift. We were talking about gifts. Grace is a gift. When someone comes and presents a gift with you, it's yours to take and do it as you please. And grace is a gift, a gift from God. He told her to drink, and you'll never, never be thirsty again. She used to come, the Bible said, at the sixth hour of the day, which is the hottest time of the day. Why did she come then? Because there was no one else around. There was no other women around. She didn't have to worry about people calling her names. She didn't have to worry about people looking at her funny. So she comes in the hottest part of the day because there's nobody else out there. Yeah. Nobody but who? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Who went all out of his way while the disciples were off someplace else. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jesus was doing what he was called to do. Amen. Thank you. Prophet Jeremiah says that his mercy is new every morning. New mercy I see every day because his grace is sufficient. Through faith by grace, we are saved. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We are the seed of Abraham. Bless your name, Lord. The hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for going up on that cross, for marching on up to Calvary. Ha! Thank you, Lord. And he marched on up there for, for you and for me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The blood was dripping down. His feet was busted up. He was all busted up. And he was carrying that cross on up Calvary, up that mountain. Hallelujah. And he needed a little help. So a man came along to help him. Do you need a little help today? If you need a little help today, call on Brother Jesus. He said he'd be our brother in sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for us each and every day. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. He continued to march on up that hill to Golgotha, where they tied him down and nailed his hands and nails in his feet. My God. They put thorns around his head and mocked him as being the king of the Jews. My God. A sword in his side with a blood and the water came rushing out. Oh, Holy Father. But he stayed on that cross. He stayed there. He could have called 10,000 legions of angels to get him down off of there. But he stayed there for you and me because of his grace. His grace. It was nothing but the grace of God. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. My Lord, bless your name. Bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. It was the grace of God that kept me, that brought me, that taught me. Hallelujah. I could not have done it without the grace of God. Bless your name, Lord. We bless your name. Let's just bless his name. Stand to your feet and just bless his name and thank him for the grace. These books are available on Amazon.com. For further contact information, or availability on speaking engagements, please contact Minister Medina at 757-281-0182. God bless you and yours.